Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is, how do I let go of a female psychopath gracefully? Um, I think that's a great viewer question because they don't want to be on the radar when of this individual. In other words, you know, am I giving up? Um, what is my problem? Am I going to tell anybody? Is this a sign of weakness? You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, go through the, the mind of a man who's experiencing this. And how do you sort of keep your head held high and still maintain your sense of feeling man, your manliness, your manhood, your sense that I am, you know, this doesn't affect me. This doesn't bother me. I'm strong enough. I can handle this. Um, you know, and just can, you know, but there, there becomes a problem when you're in a relationship with a female psychopath is that it ultimately is not going to give you strength. It is going to exploit your weakness. And that is really when, you know, you begin to kind of see through and want some different direction, some different thought patterns, some different perspective on the relationship. Because to understand a relationship with a, a psychopath is to understand that they're always sort of sussing people out and they're going to mimic back to you your, their, the ideal partner that you feel that is a good fit for you, meaning that it is fulfilling of your needs that you didn't know that you had. So there's a feeling oftentimes of this exhilaration, titillis, you know, titillation, stimulation that you get from a female psychopath when you're in the throes of it. And so this then does become an addiction for a lot of men, meaning they're seeking that, that thrill, that, you know, stimulation, that exhilaration of, you know, having your, you know, the boundaries violated, you know, getting to let go of responsibility for a moment, whatever is oftentimes the, the multi layers of the relationship is to understand that there is a denial and there is a letting go of accountability and responsibility sort of intertwined with the relationship. And so a lot of men stay in the relationship to kind of prove their masculinity, meaning this doesn't bother me. You can do this. You can, um, you know, not call me back. You can, um, sort of cross the line with me here. Um, that's fine. I'm a man, you know, so if you've sort of plugged into this promulgating of the ego of the female psychopath and are sort of propping up their ego by sort of swallowing your suffering, then you're, you're sort of putting them above and beyond you, which is kind of a big no, no when it comes to handling and healing through relationship with a female psychopath. They're different. They're, um, they're so, um, exciting. The things that they say, no one else has made me feel this way. All these different things, you know, that you're giving credit to the psychopath when really you need to be giving some credit to yourself in terms of, you know, looking at this and saying, perhaps something is not right here. I need to change and change my pursuit. And how can I do this gracefully, not only for the present, but so that you stop sort of being attracted to or attracting people who are going to take advantage, who are going to be deceitful, um, for people who are going to violate your boundaries and leave you sort of in the dust. And to also to understand that a, a difficult day in recovery or, you know, correcting things is better than a good day in addiction. In other words, this is really where working through it, even if you feel like you're going slow motion, even if you feel that you're sort of going fits and starts, that is a better place to be than in the dark, than in denial, in the delusion of the relationship sort of being healthy. And we have a lot of viewers who are asking, well, what is a healthy relationship to look like? Because, and you, you need to kind of get an idea of what this correlates for you, and customize for you what is a healthy relationship and to understand what the balance is and to see that you can have that 
all, but to stay in a relationship with a female psychopath where it's secretive, where it's, you know, it's sort of gotten you out of your character and you're interpreting this as growth when it's really sort of taking you off the rails. You know, you're not developing and growing. You're not in a sense of strength. You're more in a sense of, look what I got away with. Um, which tends to be sort of, in my viewpoint, sort of a hallmark of addiction. If you're in a relationship with somebody who you feel that, you know, they're getting away with this, um, they're sneaking in texts or sneaking in pictures, get togethers, um, even sort of thinking in that way, like the psychopath, which means oftentimes it's very cold and callous. Um, not, you know, and then just say, well, this is so unique for an, a, a female and that there's no one else like this. So I'll pay the, I'll, you know, I'll do my dues. Um, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's important to understand that to create a desire for those individual moments where you're really looking at appreciating things is even though it's difficult, it's far better for you. The payoff will be better in the difficulty that you work through versus still staying in the throes. In other words, working through the confusion is better than staying in the fog. So emerging from it, even though it's difficult, it's far better, you know, re more rewarding to you than staying in the throes of a psychopathic ego and promulgating it and propping up that ego. So in other words, I think for a lot of men that men is that they think that that to complement the ego of a female psychopath will help them sort of bow out gracefully. You know, how do you let it go if it's, you know, causing you increased weakness and you need to understand what's actually making you stronger, doing new things, being more creative, a step in the right direction and recharging, rejuvenating, and you'll feel that inner circuit versus, you know, being exploited and made weak on down the road. In other words, handle it now before it becomes really the full-blown engineered chaos that is in store. And, you know, so to stop stroking the ego of this female psychopath is important. Even though you might think it's going to get you, you know, what it is, objectively, it's not. It's a subjective sort of twisting and you know it it'll it'll take many spectrums it'll take some time but to realize that the female is you know is is got it all within in other words for them to string people along is the name of the game and men don't realize this um, I think it's important to understand that ultimately not only do you want to heal but you want to heal to the point where you're no longer attracted and no longer attracting these sort of relationships, these sort of seductions, these sort of outlets. And to understand that, you know, the reason why you entered into the relationship, there needs to be looked at something within you, even though this does not make any sense. Um, you know, people do not like to ask the question, what is it about me that attracted this relationship? It's actually sort of a divine perfection that attracted the re you to the relationship. I'll, I'll have you known that. There's a divine order that caused this to be. Um, it's something bigger than you. And to instill more of your so sort of manliness and that, that also that sensitivity that will grow in that, in that raw area is sort of the new juice, the new reward, the new payoff for you. Um, and so even though it feels uncomfortable to embrace that discomfort is so important. Um, it is to be like in the eyes of a child again, is to let go of the female psychopath with grace, meaning not losing your, not losing your marbles, not losing your cookies, not having a vomitocious, you know, emotional, you know, blowout with them. Um, where it's just you're not making any sense and you're losing your composure. The best place to gain your composure is in the privacy of your reflection and to then sort of back off and then hold the space and then get a vision of really truly how you can experience the profundity 
of the grace and move through it while not being snagged and hurt and sort of going off the rails with them. The best way to let go of a weakness is to let it go. In other words, stop the holding and, you know, that sort of constant trying to recircle and, and, and stay around that idea of the relationship. To let that idea go and become an idea person, you know, is truly important um, to liberating and stopping the blocks because what you think is enlarging you is actually making you smaller in a relationship with a female psychopath. It'll take all of your values. It'll take all of your energy. It'll cause you to feel foreign to yourself, which is not a positive space to be in. And that's really sort of, you know, a, um, a true loss of control. And that is very unpleasant. Yet, how could something so quote unquote pleasant turn to be unpleasant? It's because that is their demise, that is their goal, that is their deliberate and pre-calculated end for things, is the, the suffering. And for them to see that sort of makes them feel powerful, better than they've, you know, proven themselves, they're all out for the win. So it's, it's not going to cause you any strength um, to maintain the relationship. So a lot of men, I think... They need to understand that it's not going to build up your strength to keep it going. It's it's going to build up your strength to let it go and to do it very time effective. You know, stop the analysis paralysis. And even if you say, I'm going to, you know, begin one day at a time. I'm going to let them go for this hour, then for this second hour, and then this day, and then the second day. And if I can make it this hour, then I can make it the second hour. And if I can make it the second hour, then I can make it the third. And then to go from there is to sort of be able to lead yourself in the right direction. And then you'll surprise yourself. But usually it's that feeling that I am better with them than without them, which keeps you stuck. And because oftentimes it's like an alcoholic. They feel that they are better with the drink than without the drug addict you know, I'm better with the drug, you know, they just sort of fall at the mercy and then the drug is doing them. Same thing with a relationship with the female psychopath. You know, you're not in the relationship. The relationship is doing you. And this becomes a place that you definitely want to find the map and the track away from in a state of grace, meaning letting the divine order just allow it to resolve and care and just to let it go to stop holding on and then to catch yourself when you're holding on because you're just thickening the block that you're living under you're thickening the weight you're you're increasing the weight where really healthy relationships and we have a lot of viewers who want to say well after this what is a healthy relationship look like so we're going to discuss that but it sure isn't when someone is manipulating and creating a persona to fulfill your needs, but then causes you to abandon your own sense of self and know where your, your, your sense of center is. Um, that is a very scary and a place I would highly recommend you avoid. And so to understand and use the cognitive tool of reframing and rather than saying, this is the relationship that makes me look like cool or a man or, you know, on, on that outward sense to look at what it's truly doing. Is it corroding you from the inside out, not the outside in? So a lot of people feel that, you know, to um, do their work is sort of taking away from their ego or how their, their persona is when it couldn't be further from the opposite. You know, it's that inner work that draws that those relationships to you in a new vibe, a new energy, a new energy field. And to create that um, and uplifted is to trust that the divine order has it so. And if you can give it up to that and just understand that to let go of weakness when it comes to this, is to let it go, to stop the ego boosting, 
playing into the hands of the psychopath, making the, you know, um, the private jokes, those sort of things that tend to keep you in the secrecy. It feels like it's, you know, um, it's enlightening you, but it's actually taking you further away. And, you know, the true growth will be in your behavior. So we need to trip the, um, the subconscious and get right into the behavior of letting it, of letting go. Um, and a letting go is a skill. It is a skill that you need to enter and pass through the mindset and break through those thought forms which are holding you back. And you don't, you, you oftentimes, it becomes so habitual that the holding back feels like strength and it, it becomes, um, it becomes difficult to recognize. So it's actually releasing of that that appears to be strong and allowing the true strength to come through is an important fine-tuned area to live in, meaning getting into that heightened awareness um, can be opened up. And opening up that higher awareness is to ask yourself these questions that help you to really look within and hold on and continue to shape and acknowledge and validate that truth. Um, and to realize that the, the questions that you have been limiting yourself with need to be eradicated. You're, if you're asking yourself the wrong questions or the same questions, you're going to get the same answers. So it's time to, you know, double up your awareness and I don't even want to say your mindfulness because mindfulness to me operates in this realm when we're talking about something more expansive where all of a sudden you're doing what it is you know you need to do and you're living in a no state. It's oftentimes a, very, a place where not a lot of people have lived long enough because that's just not where our society is focusing. Um, and so to realize especially when it comes, we're going to look at this male and female, um, you know, release and, um, and to understand that there's true needs that need to be met versus the female psychopath, which is more about an addiction. And it's more about taking the place of, it's like, you know, it's more of, you know, it's keeping you under the rock versus sort of emerging through and rising above, if that makes any sense. So the female psychopath will have a lot of very exciting and titillating presence. The things that they say, erotic, um, seductive, um, romantic, the, um, the, you know, uh, the, the way that they make a man feel will, will oftentimes is to feel like such a man. Um, which is the, which is the case, you know, your, your manliness is alive and well, but a female psychopath is, is exploiting that and then going to turn it upside down on itself, which is not pleasant. Um, you're, you're, you don't feel grounded. You don't feel established and you lose a sense of sort of reality. Um, and so true manliness oftentimes is a sense of integrity. True manliness is a sense of being able to provide. True manliness is to know that, you know, you can uh, please the opposite sex or that you're still attractive, you know, that people find you interesting and intriguing, which is oftentimes very much the case, but the psychopath will, will you know, decoy this. And so it's important to ask yourself the questions and know what does real true personhood mean to you? Um, and what does it truly mean to live in a, an integrity space yet that is still, you know, exciting. Um, and because when you're, when you're in a relationship with a female psychopath, there's this going to be this sort of trading off and sort of, letting go, you know, letting go of your foundation for the spire and the female psychopath won't allow you into that spire, but the spire 
meaning that sort of heightened level when you're you know in the bell chamber of the church or you're in the upper minuet of the mosque or you're on the top of a vista you know when you're really at that heightened level you know you're at the top of your game um you're at the top of your you know sort of into your own into your element into your creativity into the flow that's where you want to be um, and that is oftentimes an uninhibited space that is liberated not by the crossing of boundaries but it's because of a creative and more sort of prolific energy that you tap into um, that keeps you up like truly from a heightened perspective and that heightened perspective can be yours and you own it but when you're with a female psychopath it's the illusion that you're there but it's really taking you down into the tanker into the flusher so you have to be aware of the twisted aspect and to straighten it out and to really you know get um some composure about it to exit that with grace in other words doing the work and the behavior and getting to that 100 percent awareness of clarity and to know that that is what is attractive and it's like that second lens where you know that what's attractive is that you are not what what is attractive is that you are no longer attracted to them and you move without a stitch you move without a hitch you move without a snag you just start doing it you are enforcing it and the enforcing needs to be consistent and you can experience tremendous amount of growth in a short amount of time once you really begin to lift up and to look at and stop sort of telling the wrong story to yourself and to realize that this has become to you you're, you're in a character that you no longer want to be as and so it's a changing of role and a changing of identity and to not not just to only let go but to incorporate and move forward so you alchemize it's not like you are losing your past or it doesn't mean anything or um you know any of that sort of you know i'm i, I don't have a foundation i don't have roots i don't have um a legacy i don't have a family tree all these different things that people think that you know letting go of someone who is psychopathic means sort of dissolving everything and not and just you know they, they don't feel really connected so realize that it's part of the alchemy and you can really truly be beyond and diffusing that those wounds I mean to the point where it's just crystalline and it's just you know it's just it has its meaning but it's extrapolated into something more valuable and more effervescent and more real and giving you clarity and light just as if you know when you're on and to really clear it out I, I would re really recommend you know getting out into a specific light um, and allowing that sunlight to permeate your being and it's a feeling state that you need to go into where you sort of dissolve that need to stroke the ego of another and then have that re reflected back as your manhood your manhood stands strong independent of any other counterforce true you know the, and and just like as a woman who is nurturing and things of that nature it's her genuine aspect and so we need to sort of get and enfold all that and then bring you into a place very deliberately into a healing place into a healing mode into that sort of inner sanctuary that inner real estate that we want to put new track lightings in and to bring that forward really what is powerful is the energy of the sun i'm not prescribing you know 500 dollars medication right now what i'm doing is advising how important it is and you can do this especially if you live in a very overcast area where in or in you know in a corporate job you know grinding and grinding you know and it's always indoors and it's always sort of 
set up to be comfortable and it's more comfortable to have this female psychopath in your life and you know you're afraid of this discomfort or really what's going to come out of it for your your inner wound you know so to realize that letting go of your weakness is going to be and and that illusion is going to be the past past best path to your strength and to allow to know that the strength has to be a safe feeling space. So really what is energizing and true energy is not going to be, um, you know, just staying in your current routine. You need to sort of break up the pattern a little bit and exert a sense of free will. Um, and breaking up the pattern and getting into the subconscious level is the way to open it up with grace and not interacting, not using their counterforce as a force. And so an exercise, which is very important for you to do is experientially put yourself in situations where you can experience, not be, not as an ego, not having to prove or need validation from others. We're talking about intrinsic motivation to exit the relationship with a female psychopath with grace has to be an inside internal motivator. Not because others are going to applaud you, not because you're going to get a plaque, not because, you know, um, she's going to say, hey, you finally figured me out, you know, because the female psychopath, they will be like that. They'll be like, oh, well, you know, you finally got this and then they'll have no problem moving on. They don't have that same sort of loss, grief, um, and wound. And so physiologically, one needs to have deliberate and use of the divine will and free will to give yourself new feelings and impart these into your being. It sounds so simple, but yet I encourage you to try this. Um, and for that means seeking out literally the sun, the the source of all the food and the life on the planet is really truly what's keeping this place going. And you need to, as a human organic being, you know, parts of you are from other stars, you know, collapsed stardust. You've got all sorts of minerals and um, enzymes and um, neurochemistry going on and higher orders of brain functioning, which oftentimes people don't understand the use of brain waves and how this can actually provide healing states and you know eliminate a lot of this fear and pain that comes from relationships where there's been a lot of deception and pathological lying and violation of boundaries and all this you know back and forth and creates this situation so i really encourage you to go out and look for sun this, you know, whether it's sitting, um, you know, outside in a forest preserve, whether it's in a restaurant, um, whether it's in a coffee shop, whether it's, you know, on a sidewalk somewhere, on a bench, a golf course, um, a w whatever, um, you know, go and really soak in some sun and just allow it to permeate your being. And do this with deliberation. And know that goodness and light and truth are filling your being now. Light is filling my being now. It's an allow state. We're not talking about struggle and writing out an ultimatum and, you know, taking this, you know, to the board for discussion. I mean, we're talking about the, the allowing sort of that higher order energy to do the work for you rather than the struggle and the intellectual. So it is a whole different um, release. Once you can do that and uh, that allowing and allowing and once you allow that sunlight into your being, realize that you are in the right place. You are right where you are supposed to be. You're not early. You're not late. You know, you're not underdressed. You're not overdressed. Your hair isn't wrong. Your hair isn't right. It just is. This is an internal B state that I want you to cultivate as a man. Because once you feel that, that light will begin to dispel that feeling of coldness, loss, depression, 
it's a physiological state. It's, you know, it's not like going to a steam room and, and, you know, um, you know, and warming up. It's literally allowing that life force into your being. And once you make that proclamation and you, it, it is like a living prayer. Um, it is, it is allowing that and then allowing more to emanate from you from that space. And that's where your own solutions will arise. And that's where I want you to be living. When those new little flashes of insight take, you know, take your feet up and begin to have you just moving and doing what you're supposed to be doing, you are in the right place. And realize these new beginnings need to be enforced. And I want you to enforce them, meaning continue on the daily and realize the preciousness, just like when you're walking in a forest at dawn and you see the sparkling effervescence of sort of frosted light, if you've ever done this and seeing, you know, how everything glistens and sparkles and it's just like a painting, like, you know, the most marvelous, um, Monet or whoever your art, favorite artist is, Picasso. I mean, they could just, if they could capture this moment. And then realize as you continue to walk, 10 minutes of new light, it changes the ethos and flow of that forest. And realize that that's truly where your life is at when you begin to soak up that that light. And then take others in in that vibe rather than try to claw, chew, cheat, you know, all those different things because that's going on in, your, in the back of your mind. And that's the engineer who's you know, driving the caboose here on the show. I mean, that is your subconscious mind is the one who's going to be the, the revealer, the magician, the miracle maker. And I want you to experience that profundity of unfolding where all of a sudden you're arriving at the things and doing the things that you didn't think you could do because you were inhibited. These relationships can be great inhibitors rather than great releasers. In divine time and divine order, moving through that will help you, will bring you to the other side, the other shore. It might feel like an island, but it's more kind of like a big gulf wind that might kind of throw you there gently. It might take you to some different turnarounds, but allow yourself to sort of land, if you will, and arrive and permit and to be in that. Because once you're in that perspective, you can see what's going on. Your own inner intelligence is opened up and you no longer have to dispel your senses. You can begin to hear them. And I suggest right when they occur, write them down so you can have them in front of you. But literally I'm talking about solutions where you have a deliberateness and a freedom of will that's taking you in the right direction. Even if you're not used to tapping into it, you will begin to do this. And then once you allow the lightness of being to flood out,